everyone. My name is Linda Saltz. I'm an advanced certified QuickBooks advisor with QBalance.com. And I had an interesting question from a client needing a specialized invoice form that their customer was requesting. So I took on the challenge to see what I could do. And it will work if you don't have a lot of custom data that needs to be in that invoice form. So what I've done is set up a, a standard form in Excel with information that the customer's customer wanted to appear on every single invoice. Here is our website, our logo, our, our, our license, the company's license number, their EIN number, that fact that it's an invoice. Now, data that changes each invoice will be the invoice number, the invoice date, and we'll set up a custom field in QuickBooks Online for this week ending date. QuickBooks Online allows for three custom fields if you can get all of this what I call static data, data that doesn't change from invoice to invoice in your template, you can then imp and prepare your forms in QuickBooks Online. For example, all invoices for this company are going to be submitted by Ed Smith. We've imported into Excel a screenshot of his signature, and this is where the standard data will appear, item, description, rate, quantity, and amount. Down below, the payment terms will come in from the customer record in QuickBooks Online. We have some conditions that we wanted to appear on our invoice, and we wanted to tell the customer where the payments should be wired to. This, again, is, is static data that will appear on the same form. If there's one piece of data that changes, you could set up two templates and pick and choose the correct template based on what the static data is because you are limited to three custom fields. Okay, so what I need to do is get this into Word as a form and with my limited designer skills, I just threw it into Excel and now what I'll do is save this as a PDF. I will save it as a custom, custom invoice form as a watermark and replace it. So the next step will be to take this PDF and convert it to a JPEG. I have a program that does that for me. Go to view and look full screen mode. I'll bring up, take this screenshot, save it as a JPEG, I'll call it a watermark, and I now have a JPEG of, a, of an Excel workbook. Next step is to come to Word. We'll go to page layout and watermark and custom watermark and import that picture. And not it's not a washout and we want the scale 100% and we'll apply that to that. It's too far to the left page setup, and I will have a, a 1.5 left margin and a 0.25 top margin and a 0.25 bottom margin and a 0.1 right margin and click on OK. Now I can start to put in my data that will change. QuickBooks Online has quite a few fields that you can map into this Word document. Uh, my website has a list of all the fields. Company address, email, name. Now all of this is already set up as static data on the watermark. So we don't really need any of this mapping. We do need custom field that will start in order. We have an invoice number. So we need to place the invoice date and number and we can insert a table We can format the alignment to be the bottom and right justified. Select the borders and shadings of this table so that there are none. And in that first table, uh, invoice number. Here we can put in invoice date. If you go back into that standard listing of fields that are available, we can go down and see that invoice date is the technically the name of the field, and invoice number is technically the name of the field. If we spell it exactly as listed here, I'm guessing QuickBooks Online will do the mapping for us. So we'll just put in invoice number here, but it's not necessary and it's a little bit too wide, and then I'll map it myself. For the week ending date, we don't need to have a table. We can say custom, custom one. 
and keep that field here. Now, just because we're placing the fields on this form in this location, don't expect it to show up in the perfect position. It's going to need fiddling. The line spacing to, this is 1.5 to 1 option here and say, you know, 0.85. If I did that and, and did a new line, I might get it to show up exactly where it needs to be. So changing your line spacing in your document will work wonders to help you uh, find the, the correct solution. To put in another table, let's see, we need five columns wide. Insert rows below, okay. So we can grab this table and align it. So we'll get that table lined up with Now we don't need these lines, but right now they're helping me format the fields in the correct location. Click on the table, settings, right click, distribute rows evenly, and we now have our rows align the cells to be right justified. So we'll definitely express. So now that we have our rows set up, borders and shading, and we can say no borders and shading. But we can data we want in each of these fields. Again, we're going to map it. Oh, we forgot to put the brackets. I think these are in side and out. I think we'll just leave this as line amount here. Amount, we'll just put amount. And then down here we're going to need to put in total. total. Alright, so we have some fields that we're going to line up now and, and remove the borders and shading on the whole table is not. Okay, there we go. And we have the information that we need. We also need one more field here under payment term. We'll just put here terms. Now we're ready to save this file, our invoice one template. Let's save. Now let's log on to QuickBooks Online. And there's a few little housekeeping things we have to take care of. And let's go to our settings, accounts and settings. And we'll go to our sales settings. We need to edit our sales form content. And we'll just put in here week ending. And if I'd like to point out one thing, if you did want a shipping, a ship to address, you should mark off this uh, form. You should select this checkbox. If you want custom transaction numbers, check it. If you want service date on your forms, be sure to check that. Putting dis the discount and deposit amount or footer data. But all of this should be set up first. If you add it later, it will throw off your formatting. You have to start over and it's a bit of a nuisance. Once you get it imported, it works quite well. Let's click Save on that. So that's the first step. And the next thing we'll do, go to QuickBooks Labs and turn on Import Styles. So we'll turn that on. Click on Done. Now we're ready to import our template. Let's go to the Big Gear. Custom Form Styles. New Style. Import Style. Browse for our Invoice 1 template click on next. QuickBooks displays the fields that you created on your Word document on the left. On the right are their QBO fields that you need to match up and map. So we'll choose invoice number, invoice date, custom field one it found, item product and service it found, we did item product service description, Rate and quantity all seem to be matched up automatically. Amount did not c come through, so we'll type in amount 
we want the amount line total terms matched up and total amount due came through correctly so we'll choose next with, done with our mapping this is a preview I would suggest you just save your template and do a test invoice let's go ahead and create an invoice labor 15 hours at 85 material 150 okay let's go to customize and choose our newly imported template we'll hit save and print and preview and we see our invoice number lined up of course we, sh we should not have these borders we'll have to get rid of that on our next edit the labor description and rate they all seem to be appearing in the right location unfortunately our totals are way too high and I believe that's because QuickBooks is going to online is going to put the grand total uh, two or three spaces below the last line item so we're going to need some filler spaces so let's go ahead and add some lines I'm going to try line number 11 and put in a filler uh, item called thank you for your business. Let's hit save and then print preview to see how that looks. Now we can see that the thank you for your business is towards the bottom of the invoice and our net 30 and our grand total appear in the almost the correct line location however the columns are this this is the grand total and that should be in the far right so there's something wrong with our template we'll have to get that fixed and try again so we'll close we'll just hit save and close out of here and we'll go back to our word document so over here we may be able to move this over to the right a little bit and we can grab this table and maybe move it up just a little bit and as you can see I may just find it easier to put another table in below put a couple lines in here and insert another table we'll just put the terms and put the total here and we'll get rid of all these extra lines we don't need that okay and then we'll just get rid of these lines around that those fields right click on this plus and go to table properties borders and shading none and we're good that looks good so let's see if that works file and save as okay let's go back over to custom form styles style import style browse and we'll do three open next do our mapping again let's go back to our invoice choose template 3 and let's see and again we have this spacer of putting a thank you for your business on the last uh, printable line so there are some workarounds that we have to live with <gasps> and look at that it's amazing good luck guys if you need help with this you can give me a call 
number is 800-216-0763. We solve all kinds of issues and problems with QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online. Thank you.